This video is sponsored by KiwiCo. More on them later. Me, 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 me. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I'm Danny, and this is another episode of Can I Make It For Cheaper? <laughs> a series where I take your suggested highly priced decor items and find a DIY solution to dupe it in a high quality way and hopefully for one third of the price. Maybe I can, maybe I can't, but that is what this series is meant to find out. Of course, in this series, I normally do user generated suggestions, but as the first can I make it for cheaper of the year and me really just in need of a project I can conquer because as of last week, I went through a lot. I should have measured that side of the wall too. <laughs> When you're feeling low, do what you know. Yeah? Beyond that, I just really wanted to pick a project I've been wanting to recreate. I wanted to create something cool, but functional. And if you haven't guessed from my thumbnail, we are going to dupe a trendy credenza. Where did the word credenza come from? The noun credenza originated from medieval Latin in the Italian Republic around 1875 to 1880. A credenza is just a fancy way of saying a buffet. <laughs> but before we get into it, if you're not subscribed and you're new here, welcome. Hit that subscribe button. Join this wonderful community of DIYers. But with that said, let's get duping. Editor, roll the tape. Boop. You're so far away. Boop. <laughs> All right, Urban Outfitters, you're back on the DIY chopping block today, suggested by me. I am focusing on the fabulous retro Tabitha credenza, currently valued at $9.99. Look at this cabinet. It is quite beautiful. It's a very simple line, but it's got these nice half moon shapes built into it and could be a great piece in anyone's home. I mean, there really isn't a lot to this piece. It's got a simple shape. It's got those half moon fronts. A thousand dollars is a lot of money and uh, I get it the thing is made of white oak but I'm certainly not about to spend a thousand buckaroos on it <laughs> no ma'am so let's do better one thing I do want to note within this series for any new viewers is that my price evaluation it doesn't factor in the cost of tools or my time but I will note how many days it took me to make it if you want to factor that in now anything beyond those two elements will get calculated so we can really evaluate if we can make it for cheaper so let's go make a credenza let's go DIY DIY friends, just taking a quick minute before we get into the DIY to talk to you about today's sponsor, KiwiCo. KiwiCo creates super rad hands-on projects and toys designed to expose kids to concepts in STEAM, science, technology, engineering, art, and math. Each month, a new crate arrives with a new theme that teaches hands-on learning and fun. They have nine subscription lines, each catering to different age groups and topics. You're given all the supplies you need, detailed kid-friendly instructions, and an education magazine filled with content to learn even more about the crate's theme, and they ship to more than 40 countries. I am such a fan of these crates because they inspire kids to see themselves as makers, engineering, and creating their own innovative designs and outcomes. Honestly, if we can inspire and encourage kids how to problem solve or innovate or just simply create, who knows what they could do tomorrow. So the crates I have here are the Tinker Crate and the Maker Crate. The Tinker Crate helps kids discover seriously fun STEM projects designed to develop kids' natural creativity and curiosity. And the Maker Crate helps discover art and design tools to grow creative confidence and turn artistic visions into design realities. Look how cool this is! I made a walking robot! I shall name you Bob. You shall be my walking robot. I mean, the best part is too, now I can move on to my knitted hat just in time for winter because it has been cold. This was so much fun to make. I mean, I know that this is for kids, but like even as an adult, I had a lot of fun building this. I mean, I just feel like that these boxes feel like an invitation to inspire young and older <laughs> DIYers in the making. But the best part is, is that Kibiko is giving me a special link that you can use to get 50% off your first month of any crate by going to 
to kibico.com slash DIY Danny and it is linked in the description box for you. So go check it out and let's work to empower kids to be fearless innovators of our future. Right, Bob? I agree, but let's get back to our own fearless project. You know, Bob, I couldn't agree more. Bob, why do you always have to walk away from me? I found this mustache in my mustache kit. I kind of love it, am I right? Was I meant to have a handlebar mustache my whole life? I mean... Wow. Do you want to pet it? Oh, <gasps> okay, what's the plan? What's the plan? What's the plan? Obviously, as you can see, this credenza is not overly complicated. I mean, it is technically just a rectangle, two doors, and then we have some half moon shapes on the front. What I liked about this was its simplicity. Like, it feels really playful. And the reason why I wanted to build this was because I just wanted better storage solutions in this space, in my art space. As you know, there is a window, and underneath this window, I have an IKEA hack. I have a book case, a Billy bookcase that I turned on the side. The issue, it just, it's not nice looking. Like I never want to actually take any photos in here because this room is just exploding. So what I'm saying is I just want to hide all that junk behind two closed doors that look nice. <laughs> then I started looking at the price for wood and uh, it was going to be expensive. So it actually made more sense for me to kind of do an Ikea hack. Plus, you know, you all love Ikea hacks. A lot of you at home who maybe don't have as much confidence in the building space, you might feel like, you know what? Maybe I can make this credenza. So that's what I did. I went and bought two Ivor cabinets. What my plan is to take two Ivor cabinets, build a base for both of them to sit on to kind of unify them. I'm going to use MDF to create those half moon shapes on the front, mostly because I had the MDF already. So yes, we are duping this piece, but we're kind of making it our own. I got all my measurements, check it out right there. It says the splendid plan. I wrote it down. It's gonna be splendid. It's gonna be great If you want to see these measurements, I will share them on my Milanote page that is linked to this video So check that out down below So let's go make this dupe. Did I mention it's minus 28 outside? <laughs> So we're in She Shack, and honestly, it's not that cold in here because I turned my heater on this morning very early. And if you don't believe me, we can do a breath test. So we need to start DIYing. We have our project cut list. The one thing I don't like about the Ivor shelf is the doors. It has these like weird lip things that you're supposed to be able to like use your fingers to grab. And then the other thing is they built it so that there's like a teeny tiny gap that runs down the front. It drives me nuts. I'm gonna cut one inch in, cut this completely off, and then we're gonna replace it with another piece of wood and do a funky little glue up. So with that said, we got some one by two to cut. We gotta cut these doors. We gotta cut some MDF. Let's get cutting. Very quickly, I just wanna interrupt this montage to say the base of the credenza is going to be built with a one by two, but to save myself cost on lumber, I actually bought myself a two by six that I'm gonna cut in half because it was way cheaper to buy the two by six to get two pieces than to buy two pieces of two by four. You can find ways to save costs if you just think outside the box. Think outside the box you're building. I don't know, let's keep going. So I'm probably about like 90% done or in my head I was 90% done and I was sanding the second door and I realized I only did two doors. I still have two more inside that I have to cut, create a piece for, glue up and finesse. Love that for me. Nothing better than more work. Man oh man do I love my job. Hell or high water, I'm getting this done today. I'm actually gonna go do it now.
Okay, so my heater died and it's currently minus 15, which is a good thing. I mean, technically the weather is getting warmer, but it's still minus 15, which is freaking cold. Luckily we're at the sanding stage, so I can do all the sanding inside. So see you soon. <laughs> It is probably close to 6.30 now. It's late and I kind of want to quit for the day. Although it doesn't feel like a lot of progress, it's definitely going to come together tomorrow and it's going to come together very quickly. So that's all very exciting. I'm really happy with the way that all these glue ups happen. So I'm pretty happy with everything. I will sleep well tonight and uh, we'll just do it again tomorrow. So I'll see you then. Top of the morning to ya, DIYers. Top of the morning to ya, DIYers. Top of the morning to ya, DIYers. <laughs> Today, we need to cut our half moon shapes, secure them onto our doors, and then all we need to do is just assemble all the pieces and then we're basically done. In front of me, I have this sheet of three quarter inch MDF. Now, there's not a straight line on this MDF sheet. So what I'm gonna have to do is square it off, make some cuts, and then once I have a square line, I can basically start to create my half moon shapes. To do the half moon shapes, we're gonna be using a jig. If you remember from the past, I made a jig that would help me cut a spiral. After that video, I actually just went and bought myself a circle jig. Hot dog, I'm ready for today. I hope you're ready for today. Let's get cutting. Okay, so this is so cool. I'm so excited to use this. I, I've kind of just needed the right project, but I have my plunge router here and all I need to do is basically set my pivot point here and then we can cut. I'm very excited. Hopefully this like leaves a really nice clean looking cut into this MDF. Let's cut some half circles. Nervous. So one thing about MDF is that it's really porous and the edges can end up looking really icky when you paint them. What I've learned is to prime the edges first, then sand and then paint. But the, the idea is that you prime it first and uh, you should be good to go. Kind of feels a little bit wonky right now, but I'm not really worrying about it because this entire room is slanted and wonky. So I'm just going by eye. I'm gonna make sure everything lines up, screw everything down and then see where we're at. Cause I think it's just not good to trust this space <laughs> whatsoever. So yeah, we need to pre-drill, countersink, and then we're gonna screw everything together. Let's do it. This is not where I thought I would be. Can't even sell a hundred of my tickets for free. Just got to hold on until something breaks. Keep on smiling at the rain and never make a mistake. It gets old when no one gets the job that you already know. But you build that up anyway. Leave a message saying that you're proud of me. And you always thought I was a nobody. look amazing. I'm officially going to bed. Good night. Good morning, DIY friends. So a lot happened this morning and I'm pretty excited. 
excited about it. The half moon pieces. I feel like I don't know what I'm calling them. The quarter circle pieces. This is gonna be like touched a lot with hands. So I just ended up putting a matte top coat finish. It just gave it a little bit of extra durability. Everything looks pretty good. It's almost dry. So I wanna flip these over and then paint the backsides. I also put a matte finish on this. This color is just the perfect kind of like mid-century modern furniture color. It's just so beautiful. It is stained up so well. Anyways, I'm going to prep the table. I'm gonna flip these over and uh, we'll paint the backsides. And then at that point, we're gonna get these onto the doors and then we're gonna be finished. High five to the camera. Let's do this. just finished the last door. I think we're about ready to put this on and it's finally time to see this entire credenza come together. My friends, I present to you my DIY dupe of the Tabitha credenza. Woohoo! <laughs> I gotta say, this is one rad IKEA hack. Urban Outfitters dupe. It wasn't overly challenging. I think it's a great project for a lot of beginner DIYers out there. I had a lot of fun. However, I do want to bring up a couple of things that I did run into when I was installing the piece. One thing I did not think about was the amount of space that I was going to need to clear these pieces when they hit each other. When I had originally made the piece, they actually came out 15 inches but I ended up having to go back and chop one of the sides down. So it ended up being 13 and a half by 15. In retrospect, I probably just would have made it 13 and a half by 13 and a half. So in my plans, I will reflect these new numbers because I didn't even think about it. I was thinking about the sizing of the door. I didn't even think about how it would affect how the doors open, but I did catch it. The other thing I would change about this is that I would actually go with a smaller MDF. I'd probably go with a half inch. I was using material I already had here, so I was saving on cost. I think the thinner it is, the better. And you know, beyond my challenges, I just love the way that this piece looks in my art space. I just feel a brighter creative energy in here. I think all creatives need something like that once in a while. Turn your space into a place that will give you that creative energy. And I just love that I finally have a place for all of my art things. This just brings me so much joy. Anyways, in spirit of this series, let's talk the real cost. As a reminder, the Urban Outfitters version was a high-end value of $1,000 US. With shipping and taxes, this came to a total of $1,193.73. Pulling out my DIY cost calculator, let's tally this project up. With all the materials minus the tools, this project cost me a total of $412.66, which means I saved a total of $781 by doing it myself. And that is what the series is about. Even if it doesn't come out perfect, it's still worth to save that $800. Am I right? Of course, I don't calculate my time, but if I did, it was about a two day build. I was doing this myself, but I think if I was doing this with a buddy, I would be able to get this done in a weekend, no problem. So if the question is, can I make it for cheaper? Yes, I think I can. Thank you so much for watching this episode. A big thanks to all of my patrons. You guys are amazing. If you are not a part of my DIY in progress Patreon, the link is down below. Join this wonderful community that we have started. It is a great place to be. And last, a big thank you to the sponsor KiwiCo. You can get 50% off any crate if you use the link kiwico.com slash DIY Danny. It is linked in my description box. Go check it out. As always, my friends, stay positive, stay creative, and keep on DIYing. Bye-bye.